welcome to Lay's Little Golden Books. I hope you all enjoy today's story, and maybe the grown-ups will remember it from their own childhood. Walt Disney Productions, Robin Hood, based on the Walt Disney motion picture, A Little Golden Book. Oodle lolly, oodle lolly, golly, what a day. The song rang through Sherwood Forest. Everyone who heard it knew that Robin Hood and his merry men were nearby. What a fine, generous fellow he is, said the poor cobbler of Nottingham. I want to be just like Robin Hood when I grow up, exclaimed Skippy Rabbit. He's great. On this sunny morning, Robin's song was especially happy. He and his friend Little John had bags full of gold to give to the poor people of Nottingham. Widow Rabbit could hardly believe her eyes when Robin gave her a handful of coins. If it weren't for you, we would surely starve, she said. The wicked sheriff takes everything we have and gives it to greedy Prince John. Robin Hood laughed. It is your very own gold that I give back to you. My men and I are good at finding the places where Prince John has hidden it. Away he and Little John went from house to house, bringing joy wherever they stopped. At the edge of Sherwood Forest, Little John pointed excitedly to a sign nailed on a tree. Look, Prince John is having a tournament. Robin tossed his hat into the air. I'll enter, he exclaimed. I'll wear a disguise. What fun it will be. And that was what he did. On the day of the tournament, all Robin's friends knew who the tall country boy really was, but they kept his secret. Maid Marian knew too and smiled shyly at Robin. Neither she nor anyone else in the crowd realized that the tournament had been planned as a trap to capture Robin Hood. In his royal box, Prince John sat with the court advisor, Sir Hiss. Keep your eyes open for you know who, he whispered. The tournament began. One after another, the archers came forward to shoot their arrows. Finally, only the country boy and the sheriff were left. Robin Hood stepped forward. He took careful aim, but just as he was about to shoot, the sheriff bumped Robin's bow. The arrow flew too high. Quickly, Robin Hood shot a second arrow. It hit the first and sent it flying down, straight and fast, to hit the center of the target. The country boy had won the tournament. Sir Hiss leaned toward Prince John. That's Robin Hood, he hissed. I'm sure of it. Ha, exclaimed the prince. He held his hand over the winner's head. I declare you, loser, Robin Hood, seize him, he ordered his men. Maid Marian began to cry. The townspeople bowed their heads in sorrow. Then unexpectedly, Prince John shouted, wait. The crowd stared in astonishment. They did not notice that Little John, disguised as the Duke of Chutney, was standing just behind the prince and forcing him to speak. Free the prisoner, Prince John snarled. The townspeople rushed out onto the field, cheering with joy. In the excitement that followed, Robin Hood escaped to Sherwood Forest. Prince John was furious that he had been forced to let Robin go. He ordered whole families put into jail. Even Friar Tuck, one of Robin's merry men, was chained in a dungeon. I'll use the friar as bait for my trap, the prince told Sir Hiss. When Robin Hood tries to rescue him, my sheriff will be waiting. The next day, Robin Hood went into Nottingham. This time he was disguised as a beggar. What's going on here? He asked the sheriff boldly. We're going to hang Friar Tuck at dawn, boasted the sheriff. Maybe Robin Hood too. Hang Friar Tuck? Never, Robin told himself. That night, Robin Hood with Little John tiptoed through the jail yard and slipped the jail key from the sleeping sheriff's belt. You free Friar Tuck and the other prisoners, Robin whispered. I'll try to get the gold the prince has stolen. He climbed the castle tower and slipped through a window. There lay the wicked prince snoring loudly, and all around him were bags of stolen gold. Moving on tiptoe, Robin fastened a rope to the balcony and lowered the gold to Little John. The last bag was on its way down when Prince John suddenly awoke and spied his visitor. Ha! I've got you now, shouted the prince. Robin leaped to another balcony and ran through the castle. The prince snatched up a torch and dashed after him. As he ran, his torch brushed against some draperies. Soon the whole castle was on fire. 
Look, there's Robin! The villagers stared in horror as their brave friend leaped from the burning rooftop into the moat. Prince John's archer shot at him and he disappeared under the water. From a window of the castle came the wild laughter of Prince John. We've got him, he shouted. Robin Hood is finished. Little John bowed his head in grief. So did all the villagers he had freed from the jail. Robin Hood has drowned. We'll never see him again, they wept. At that moment, a reed in the moat began to move slowly toward Little John. Suddenly, a spurt of water burst from the reed and hit Little John on the nose. Up from the dark water popped Robin's smiling face. He had been breathing through the reed. He was safe. And that night was the end of bad times in Nottingham. Prince John was never seen again. Happiness filled the village, and for all the days that followed, Sherwood Forest was filled with the songs of Robin Hood and his band of merry men. The End